Diesel Fitter Stout from Torque Brewing right here in Winnipeg. Roasty, malty, dark, spectacular. Uh, 65 IBU and 6.5% alcohol. Not a bad little stout. Um, a little hoppier than I normally, uh, normally like, but pretty nice tasting, especially with this warm weather coming up. So today I'm going to be putting together this little light bulb kit that I got in the mailbag not too long ago. It's a nice simple little kit, so it should be fairly quick to throw together. Um, got this base here with the wires pre-attached, little dome top, and a couple of circuit boards and a small handful of components. So this is a little circuit board that uh, holds all the LEDs, 38 of them. And as you can see, they're set up as 19 pairs of LEDs in parallel. There's the first one on the negative side, uh, most negative side in parallel with that one. This one there, and then it just carries on all the way around the board until you get to the middle. And there's the most positive. Kind of annoying that where the wire comes off is just a you know, a surface mount pad. You have to jam the wire onto, but whatever. We'll, we'll make do with that. The other circuit board has the driver circuit on it, which is set up as a capacitive dropper. Capacitive dropper circuit's pretty straightforward, actually. Um, and I, I think I've, uh, I've shown it before, and I know Big Clive's drawn it about a million times, but I'll just go through it quickly here anyway. So coming from the live and neutral, um, which is those two, normally this should be the live and that should be the neutral, if your light socket's wired correctly, but for the for because it's AC, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, on the live side coming in, there is a capacitor. This one here, which is 450 nanofarad. I measured it earlier, and it has a resistor in parallel with it, which is uh, 470k in that position there just has to be a large value and it's not that critical um it doesn't pass any significant amount of current going into the circuit but it just uh, uh bleeds this this capacitor down to nothing relatively quickly so that you don't get zapped that's all it's doing let's leave that guy right there so from there it goes into a full bridge rectifier um, Quickly draw this guy up. Um, I could draw it lazy, but I have time to kill here. This is going to be a quick build. So off the bottom side of this, it just goes straight to the neutral. Um, and then off the positive and negative sides, um, dee -dee 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 -dee, that's the positive side and that's the negative side. We have... This capacitor here, I know I haven't drawn it as an electrolytic, but whatever. Um, that's positive there, and this is a 4.7 microfarad. And in parallel to that is a resistor, which is 200K right there. And then we have this resistor down here, which isn't labeled on the board as anything except for R2. But it's this one, which is 10 ohms. And then that goes out to the pairs of LEDs, etc., etc., etc. And over to there. That's it. Not much to it. The only other thing is, it didn't come with LEDs. I mean, I knew that when I bought it, so I just have to uh, make a quick decision here as to which LEDs to use. I'm tempted to use these uh, these flashing LEDs, 
this kind here that just slowly color changes. They call them flashing on the uh, on the ordering page on on eBay, but so there's that one, or or there's this one which goes faster, and then slower, and then even faster. That would be annoying, I think. Um, and Big Clive's done a big LED panel with the slow flashing, so. I don't want to be accused of copying him, even though I'm going over territory that he is tread. He treads quite frequently. Um, I think actually, <laughs> I have these UV LEDs. Uh, obviously, they're not UVC. I don't think that's especially UV. Maybe like black light or something like that. But and they're little top hat LEDs, which makes them nice and uh, shallow. So I think I think there's 50 in that bag. I think I'll use that. So I guess, oh, let's just do this in the order that the components are shown on the board. We'll do C1 first, which is the series capacitor. Interesting, it's got a couple of sets of holes. So you can use different length of capacitors here, different physical lengths. And of course, they're either too close together or too far apart. The other thing that I may want to consider here is that I still have to shove this down into the bottom. Although, I've got lots of room there. Uh, what does this, where does this sit? Okay, that sits right up at the very top. And this has to go down below that bottom ridge, so. Okay. I think that'll be fine like that. Yeah, I think... I think because this is such a quick circuit, I'll do most of this in real time. At least this board. Maybe the uh, the LEDs will all speed up, but whatever. Um, so where is my bleeder resistor? That's the 470. Uh, yeah, uh, that's blue and purple. Blue and or purple, I can't tell. Yo, uh, yeah, I think that is 470. We'll assume it is anyways. I don't think it's all that critical in this circuit. Uh, and I'm sure people who can see colors better than me are going to be yelling at the screen right now. Doesn't matter. If it blows up, well, maybe uh, that'll cause the video to go viral and the whole world will see it. Oh wow, that's horrible. Just put some pressure on it. Reheat it and jam it through. There we go. You never know that anything wrong happened there. Okay, who is next? Let's uh, let's build the bridge diode, bridge rectifier. I mean, out of these diodes here. So these are just a basic diode. I didn't even look at what they are. Um, 4,000 and something, uh, 1 in 4,000 and something or other, probably. Uh, again, it's not critical. Um, anything that can handle a couple hundred volts and a few tens of milliamps is all you really need for this circuit. Not being too particular about the bands. This is just find their own uh, spacing when you when I drag them down into the board it's really not that critical a circuit even though it is going to be attached to mains voltage it's going to be inside that uh, little plastic case so nobody's going to get hurt yeah that's uh that looks right I could be using one of my fancy board holders for this. But this is just a fun, silly little build. I'm not going to bother. And it's going pretty well with this new T12 iron that I've got here. I'm liking that. It's a comfortable handle, too. I 
How's that? That's not bad. I am annoyed that these cutters seem to be a little bit magnetic. They're holding on to the bits of wire, which are just cheap steel. Let's shove them out of the way, whatever. Okay. What is next? How about that 200K resistor? Which probably is that one. Or, again, close enough. This is just in parallel with that resistor, or that uh, capacitor. Again, partly to bleed it down and maybe just to, to draw the voltage down a little bit. Ah, come on, you. I'm not trying to cut it here, I'm just trying to grab it. I'm too lazy to go and get real pliers. Okay, uh, I guess the capacitor that's in parallel with it. No, this one, it's got the pads over the side of the board and just laying over that way, so I think I'll do that. Negative is that side. Positive has even got a marking on it. So this is the smoothing capacitor so that we don't get quite so much ripple and hopefully no blinkiness and weirdness on our... Uh, our output. Easy, easy. And there's lots of holes left, but there's only one component left, and that is the big series resistor. And that is the current limiting component. If we wanted this bulb to be brighter or not quite so bright, we would change this guy. But I'm just going to go with what they gave us here. All right, well then, AC inputs are there. Uh, that one, well, they don't even have it marked live and neutral because it's not all that important. Um, but I am going to put the live one the way I drew it, just because. I'll do these one at a time, I guess. And the neutral. Let's not be so stingy with the solder. There we go. So that ought to be able to power up just right there. But I'm going to just go uh, go along here. So the LED negative and positive goes there. This is again going to be one of those ones that's a little bit of a pain in the ass to connect and to hold. That's the negative side. That wire doesn't take solder worth, worth crap. And that is the positive side, just like it's marked. Hmm. This is a place where it would be useful to have a third hand or something, but not bothering. This is something you could easily put together with pretty much no tools. Well, minimal tools anyway um, 
I should have actually done this with one of my really old, ugly soldering irons just to prove that point, but whatever. Okay, so there is that part, and that can just shove down into the bottom. Actually, there's a hole in the corner, and there's a peg there. So let's do that. Hmm, I should have put longer wires on that capacitor so that it would fold down over top of the board. Or I could not worry about that peg and just jam it down in there. I know what I'll do to keep this uh, from shorting out. I'll go all Chinese factory and just use a big chunk of capped on tape. But I did get this, uh, this roll of wide capped on tape a few weeks back in another mailbag. I can... <laughs> just do this that's what they would do in a Chinese factory isn't it sure don't laugh I can pretty much guarantee that there's stuff in your house right now that you bought at a dollar store that has exactly that on it it'd be fine all right now then, this LED board here, and this bag of LEDs. Now, I'm just going to double double check myself because, for whatever reason, my half asleep brain here can never remember that the long one is the positive. You probably want to check that now and again, anyways, just because these guys aren't always consistent should be but they aren't always so there is the first LED and does the flat side line up the way it should yeah the flat side and the LED does line up the way it's supposed to okay well that'll make it easier so I am just going to stuff all of these guys in here and solder them up. I think I'm going to shove them right down flush with the board. The uh, There's not going to be a lot of heat in here. I don't think there's any reason to try and stand them up off the board. Well... That's crap. There. No more short in there. Zoom in really tight so you can critique my soldering perfectly well. There. Okay, that's the first pair in. I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around the board. And even though I said earlier that I'm not going to uh, time lapse this. I think this part's repetitive enough that I will. Well, I'll just skip ahead actually. You've seen soldering and this board is going to take long enough. So yeah, I'll come back once these are in. See you in a moment. One hint, if you decide to do a board like this, which is so dense with through hole LEDs is only put a few in the time otherwise it just gets to be a horrendous forest of component leads and you can't get at what you're doing yes that's the voice of experience talking okay and there we're done just a matter of attaching this now so the positive pad is down in there. Yeesh. Where's the negative? It's out in the outer rim somewhere, isn't it? Hello, where have you gone? Seriously, where the hell did it go? Oh, there it is. It's over there. Jam that guy down into there. And that guy down into there. 
snap that cover on. There, now it's perfectly safe. All right, I have my bulb in my pigtail plugged into my knockoff kilowatt. Place your bets. Oh, we have that. We have 17 milliamps. Okay, that's not uh, that's not a huge current draw. 0.7 of a watt. Uh, where is power factor? Do we have power factor? Volts, 123. Uh, power factor is on the first page. 0.29. Yep, that's about as horrendous as I expected it to be. That looks reasonable enough. What does it do on a white surface? That looks kind of glowy. But it does sort of have a UV look to it. I mean, that's not, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, low UV, Not it's not going to be uh, UVC, probably in the UVA range. Surprisingly, I don't have any really horrendous nicks and cuts on my hands to look at. Hmm. That was an oversight. Okay, let's just try a little experiment here. I've got the lights out right now. Um, and when I connect this guy up and just hold it on my notepad, it sort of illuminates it. I don't know. But let's compare this. with this, which is a 60 watt incandescent uh, black light. And actually, that looks surprisingly similar, doesn't it? So this is that incandescent black light, and it is, even just after being turned on for that short amount of time, it is hot to the touch. I can't pull it out of the socket yet. This thing, of course, isn't. And those discharge capacitors are doing their job. I'm not getting a zorp off that. So that's nice. Well, that was a fun little kit to throw together, and it actually worked first try. Um, not sure, not sure what I'm going to use that for. I mean, maybe just use it in place of this one. I kind of wish I had stuff that was properly phosphorescent around here or UV reactive, anyways. But I don't really have anything other than just you know bright white paper. Um, anyway, I hope you. Uh, Hope you enjoyed that or found it amusing or entertaining or something. Uh, comments and questions down below as usual. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.